Hey guys, welcome back. What we're talking about today, which is uh, clindamycin um, and its effectiveness in odontogenic infections and uh, my opinions on it. And so this is a patient that a, had about you know some tooth pain, upper left molar, um, about one or two weeks, nothing that woke him up at night, but it was annoying. Uh, went to the dentist and you know decided that uh, he, uh, he probably had an infection up there. Was started on some clindamycin and within a day or two it's developed a vestibular abscess. So an abscess kind of in the upper vestibule inside the mouth, still inside the mouth. You really couldn't see it outside the mouth. Um, a few more days got worse and that infection spread into the canine space. So this basically when the infection starts at the end of the tooth root, gets into the vestibule and now it's spreading in the fact that it's like a balloon just expanding in there and just looking for the path of least resistance. First path that goes into is into the canine space. Canine space basically under the eye, lateral nose, front of the upper lip, etc. So this part of the face. Went in there and continued to get bigger and then from there posteriorly the canine space connects to the buccal space. So now the infection's in the cheek. And then it, now it's in the masseteric space after that. So that's kind of on the inside of the mouth more, but also going up the side of the face into the temporalis region. So this is pretty fast now. So all of this on clindamycin just getting worse, right? Patient presented and had a tooth removed um, after the swelling started on the face and got worse. Came back a couple days later, much worse. Decided, obviously, at that point, um, you know, let's go to the ER, get you admitted for some IV antibiotics, let's get a CT scan. So that's what happened. And so patient went to the ER, got a CT scan, and you'll see all this in a second or two. Well, more than a second. You'll see it in a little bit. Uh, and had a, like a four, four centimeter abscess phlegmon type appearance. Even though it didn't really have rim enhancement on the um, CT scan, it, it definitely was an abscess. So the next day he, he gets taken to the emergency room, well, the, uh, the operating room, and then has a IND done. And about 25 cc's of pus came out of that. Two days later, he just got better and better. I put a drain in, um, a Penrose drain in his cheek inside the mouth, and that helped. And he was discharged two days later after two more days of IV antibiotics. So basically, treated with clindamycin. I'm not saying any antibiotic would have possibly been better. Actually, probably would have been better. But um, what I'm talking about is clindamycin. So the reason I don't really like clindamycin is um, there's a lot of resistance with clinda. And even when I was in residency, like in the 2000s, early 2000s or whatever, mid 2000s, um, I even saw it then. And so as soon as I got out of residency, I kind of stopped using it unless I absolutely had to. Um, the other issue with Clinda people have is uh, C. diff. So Clostridium difficile, pretty violent GI tract infection where it's just massive diarrhea. You can't stop, get dehydrated and so forth. And, um, so that, that's a thing that's always been associated with clindamycin, um, although it can happen with other antibiotics too. But with the resistance, and if you, depending on where you read, it can be like 30% um, resistant bacteria or more to Clinda. And it doesn't cover Echinella carotens. It doesn't cover MRSA really well at all. Um, and other bacteria, like, you know, aerobic gram negatives, it doesn't really cover. So I just don't use it unless I absolutely have to. Uh, and it, sometimes I use it with something else because I don't trust it. So, yeah, this patient got worse on Clinda. Um, and you know, ultimately got some some heavy hitting antibiotics while well in the, in the in the hospital, obviously through IV surgical incision and drainage, and which is key for these sorts of things. So let's get into the video and what you're going to see before. It's a short video, like 40 seconds, but you're going to see the clinical exam before the IND was done. Um, you're going to see you know how tense the skin is on the cheek. You know, the way you want to examine these patients is determine where the infection is. I know you have a CT scan, but sometimes that's not great, or you may not even have one. So yeah, he's full under the under the eye, lateral nose, cheek area, and it's actually going up to the temporalis. And then when you look inside the mouth, you're going to see how full the inside of the cheek is with this infection. And it's just coming out to the point where it's causing almost pressure necrosis inside the cheek. You'll see the yellow and things like that. And then you'll see in the upper vestibule the fullness there. So it's spreading fast. You know, it needs to be drained. Um, he needs to be on some heavy hitting antibiotics for a little while. And then, you know, that's that's the way to turn the corner in a lot of these things. Even though he had the teeth out or a tooth out a few days before, and it started possibly with that tooth, once these infections get into the fascial planes and they get past the tooth into distant areas of your body, they often become their own little entity. And even if, even if the offending tooth is removed, 
you still need to drain those areas a lot of times, right? So otherwise it's not gonna get better at that point because now you've already created a new abscess up here. There's necrotic tissue in there that needs to come out. So yeah, these things create other things kind of thing. Um, that's, that's the way I kind of think of these things. So I'm, I like to be more aggressive with them. So let's just get into the video. So you can see the canine space and how it connects to the buccal space right here. And the CT scan showing the four centimeter phlegmon slash abscess. Pretty full on the outside. You're gonna see on the inside here, quite a bit of fullness. This ballooned out in the last few days after being on clindamycin.